Hey y'all, uh, Brown Punch here. Um, this video is going out to my buddy Jerry. Uh, he's got the bending bug, and he bought himself some 60 penny nails, and he kinked one first try. So that's that's a big deal. It takes over 300 pounds to kink one of these bright commons. So that's a big deal. Now, there are many things that you can do without when you're bending steel. Wraps are not one of those things. All it takes is one mistake and that nail will pierce your hand. It can damage nerves, break bones, like that. Okay? So wraps are one thing we cannot do without. Two things we need. Steel and wraps. Alright? Um, you can do without chalk, rubber bands, like that, but these things. Okay, I've lectured enough. So, what I've done here, my first wraps, before I got the uh, Cordura wraps from Iron Mine, was I cut an old t-shirt, alright? And you just get yourself a strip that's, you know, six, eight inches wide, and then kind of kind of stretch it sideways if you have, you know, if, if like me, you tend to get chintzy on the material then it's a little narrow but these kind of wraps you're you're counting on layers to protect you and one other thing and that is all right your duct tape this is not duct tape it's duct 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 tape so at the end where I'll start I want to make a strip as wide as my wrap. Now I've got this doubled up. Again, layers. That layering effect. It gives you a, a, a great deal of protection. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this on here. And what that'll do is it'll keep that point of the nail from getting through as easily. It'll kind of... Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Hinder the, the point's ability to get through because of the adhesive and, and what have you, okay? So we're going to do that on both. At least one piece of duct tape or a reasonable alternative, something tough. You know, I don't want to see you using like uh, uh, your kid's uh, clear scotch tape or something. That's not going to do the job. You know, duct tape, it has fibers in it and everything. You can see the the material in it. So, we've got that. And we'll do this one real quick. Just hang that there. So, how y'all doing? You hanging in? Hey, Jerry, buddy, man, you're going to love bending. Especially once you get your tech down. I brought a couple of nails in. I'll uh, just real quick show you. couple of things that, that might might prove helpful to you and prove helpful to me all right so we're good that's gonna help okay and you gotta pay attention to your wraps because they're gonna degrade they're gonna start working from the out you know inside out so next and I didn't uh, I didn't bring anything in to wrap on okay so I'm just gonna wrap this down my leg. So you're going to want to start like this, okay? With your nail firmly in the middle. And I always wrap it deep. And you can slide the wraps out a little bit if you need to, okay? Now how I like to wrap is like this. I go over it. And then roll it down. You see we've got layers. And this is still not even going to end up as as thick as an uh the Iron Mind wraps are those are really great. If you get a chance to get some Cordura material, you'll you'll not regret it. You can also cut them out of uh, leather, but you will really want to pay attention because the leather ones that I made, when I hit the heavier steel, the red nails, it just just went right through it. I was I was pretty blown away. 
rubber bands. Have some rubber bands. Okay. <coughs> rubber bands. Yeah. You can save the rubber bands off your broccoli, your other vegetables and stuff. They're really good rubber bands. Okay. And you get your rubber band on there and it really makes a difference. It holds that tight for you while you're doing the other wrap. And then you can also adjust your grip take a break so you see we just do this over and over you turn it you come back over turn it boom now we can wrap the other side now on these nails the side with the head is notoriously difficult to wrap and get it a good wrap on it so what it comes down to is just do the best you can and now this one you cannot slide in and out so you have to wrap it where you want it generally <coughs> I wrap about an inch and a half deep so you can do as you please now with this again I go over it but I pinch to either side of the head okay and then when I roll it down I try as, as best I can to get a tight wrap on the nail part below the head okay that will uh, that'll help you apply the, the force directly to the steel. The tighter the wrap, the better, and the safer you'll you'll remain. So your best best wrap is when you can clamp it or clip it to a solid surface like your table, or you know if you have like a, a ten pound weight or something, you can do it on your counter and then you can pull against that resistance and uh, get a much better wrap. So okay, we've got this. Now I want to scoop this one out so that it's even with the other one because when you bend the nail unevenly it makes more work for you. So Jerry, there are several different bending styles, okay? There's the reverse where you're bending over top of your fingers here, okay? You're cranking down with this hand or this hand and holding it static with this hand, okay? And you can even try to bring this wrist back. This is your reverse bend, okay? Double underhand. Now, in order of strength, this is the the least strong bending style, the most primitive, it depends all on strength, you're the least likely to become injured this way. It causes a good deal of, of, of discomfort and pain in your hands, but it's not damage. Um, next in line as far as uh, um, strength, and also the stronger the bending position, the more chance of injury. Okay, and this is double underhand, and it starts here and you drive it down and see see this action this is going to bring your hands like this as you drive it down so you bend it that way this you can only usually take it to about 40 degrees or so uh, before you'll have to reverse and finish it in the double overhand style alright chest crush which brings us to double overhand which is the strongest but the one that carries the most risk of injury as well. The shoulders, you always need to warm up before. You know, do some push-ups. The, you know, my favorite, I must, I must, I must increase my bust thing, where you push and you feel that strain on all those muscles that are going to get used. You know, you can do some isometrics. Just this simple bicep isometric will help to move blood into those shoulders. You know, my hands are mostly healed up. I lost all my callus hair from that 111 nails. So, when you're bending your nail, you want to always be safe, okay? And keep it close to your body. The further you are out away from your body, the less strength you have and the more greater the risk of injury. So, let's go. We'll do her. When you're doing a double overhand, 
you'll kind of bring it up, okay, and then just drop down over your hand. So we'll go ahead and we'll give this one a shot. You see? Now this one, you really can't take it that far because of the mechanics of it. So you get that kink that gets you started, all right? And then from there, you'll do your chest crush. Now, you kind of want to try and angle the ends of the steel in the same direction as your elbows, okay? So we can apply this force. You bring this up into the sweet spot, okay? Right up here, and then right up against your neck, and then drive your elbows forward, okay? You see? You're driving them forward. And this is a really strong position. This is where all the steel benders are able to bend that really heavy steel. But you need to start slow. Start with easy bends. Um, Jerry, I see you bought Bright Commons. And I would even recommend that you try to get yourself some of the, the uh, dull gray nails. That's a much better beginning nail to get your technique down and make sure you keep from risking injury. That's my recommendation. That's what I did to build that foundation of strength because you're going to be using muscles you're not used to using. Now, for closing it, what do I do? My knuckles are against each other. I absolutely cannot go any further. Physics disallows it. I mean, the simple mechanics of my hands pushing against each other disallows it. So, here's the trick, okay? Now, we've created this extra space, and we still have a little bit of a grip, and we, we can also do this. This is my, my go-to, because my hands are so pudgy. So we finish her up. And then, once it's close enough, you can use both your hands, fingers interlocked, and that gives you that extra, because now you can pull against your fingers. So, we do that. And then even stronger for the finish, once it's close enough, you hold it like this, and you push and grip at the same time. And it's done. Look at that. No problem. Now we'll try the mechanics of double underhand real quick. You got the taste of double overhand there, seeing me uh, do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can just reuse the wrap that I used on the pointed end without having to redo it. You can sneak that in there. I don't recommend this because now I haven't looked to see what damage was done to my wraps from that bend. So I'm going to scooch it in a little further just to be safe. And I'll go ahead and roll this up, same as we did the other one. Are you able to see this? Here we go. I just roll it down. And again, it's much better if you are able to clip it or weight it down in some fashion to create a resistance. Because then you're able to get a much, much, much cleaner wrap than I am this way. Looks pretty even there, huh? So, we'll do our double double overhand. Um, there's also this one, and I, I misremember the name of this. Is this the Heslip? It's a very interesting style, brute strength technique, where you drive your hands down and you bend against each other. And you can only take it that, that bit of a kink, you know, but it's an excellent one for building strength for your other bending techniques. It really is. It's just an amazing. But we'll deal with the the more mainstream bending techniques. So then we have our double underhand, okay? And we hold it here, all right? Now sometimes if I'm, I'm hitting a little bit bigger steel or I'm tired, I'll even start up here, you know, and just kind of drop it down. And we're keeping it close, all right? My wrists are touching my chest. And then... We drop it down, and right about here you'll encounter resistance, okay? And that's where you'll go ahead and bring your shoulders up. And that's just about as far as I can take it in uh, double underhand. A 
feel it. It's, that point's working its way through. So double or triple up that duct tape. Okay? Be safe. And I highly recommend that you just get yourself some real wraps. These are, are makeshift at best. Okay? You definitely want more. So, that's your double underhand. You know, even like uh, if you're going to use, use t-shirts or denim or something like that, an old pair of jeans, make them even thicker than I made here. So, this is the head end. I want you to see what you got going on already through the duct tape. Alright, we've already got damage happening. You see this? This is why you must, must, must be safe. Now I'm going to show you what the point did. Because this is no joke. We're applying a great amount of force here. Okay? So there's no, no monkeying about. Ready? Look how far it made it through. Look at that. You see that? All the way to there. That's how far that point was able to dig through. Do not underestimate what this can do to your body, okay? This can pound through your hand and down into your wrist. Use proper protection. Look at through the duct tape. Okay. Please be safe. That's it. Little lecture, little bending. Be safe. And I'm going to try to get a little, uh, like a step by step tutorial for um, building strength for bending and keeping safe and remaining injury free and not overtraining and, and, and. Okay? So y'all live free, punch hard, and raw, bend hard. Okay? and start small to build that good foundation of strength alright as you can't climb a flight of stairs without putting your foot on that first stair you know you risk danger if we try to start too high alright so y'all be good to yourselves because I dig you alright and I'm glad you came by catch you later bye